ass outside. So, great weather to be working on a car, man. It's like 76 or something like that, maybe 80 something. It's perfect outside right now. And it's not nighttime, so I don't have to work around a very dark garage and constantly giving you guys videos on a very dark garage. So, let me show you what I did last night. I did work on it a little bit last night. I got the drive shaft fixed. So, I think it takes a man to admit when they're wrong and the drive shaft yoke that was in it um, was fine I had had the u-joint just way too tight I was hammering on it too hard had the ends on it the end caps basically too tight and um, couldn't move it thought I ruined it thought it was something wrong with the bearings or you know the needle bearings in the u-joint took some time yesterday put on a vise um, took the u-joint caps off again Grease them up really good, put them back in, and you know, use the vise to crunch them in, and it ended up working out much, much better, and it fit just fine. So that saves me from having to go out and get uh, another U joint to fit this new um, yoke. So I've got a yoke. Um, if anybody wants it, I will sell it to them. It's brand new. Otherwise, I'm probably going to return it to uh, CJ Pony Parts and get my money back. So this is a good 90 bucks. I would love to have back to put towards carpet. So this would actually pay for hatch carpet in the back of it. So anyways, now that it's light, let's check this out before I get started on the floor today. Um, let you guys kind of see it in daylight. It's still a little dark back in there, but you can definitely see the holes now. The Swiss cheese of floor. So I'm going to scrape out some of this black um, tar stuff just to get the metal showing on both sides and man there's really nothing stopping me today from just going to town shooting this up. Come on bag, cooperate. Like SEM Well Through Primer, it's the last can. This is a must. SEM is great stuff. It's what I used in the dash pad of my Torino in there. Um, you can't even tell it's been vinyl dyed. So it's good stuff. And so we've got, uh, yeah, soapstone pencil. This is something I'm going to need to mark um, sections of the subframe when I put in the subframe connectors and whenever I uh, drill out the spot welds on the new flat, new pan so I can weld it in. Spot weld cutter. So never used one of these. Uh, I was hoping I can get this onto the drill and we'll see how this works. Okay, so got the uh, got the bit on. Um, I've already started some spot welds here. I used my story of drill bit to try to get some of these welds out, but um, let's see how well this guy works. Well, that goes right through the floor. A nice spring on. I know you're supposed to use a punch with this, but click. I don't think these are coming. daylight and then father had gotten away so I had to um, take care of my little boy and we had to go do some fun stuff we went to a uh, Halloween festival here in Mansfield and it was pretty fun he had a blast he's three and he had so much fun so anyways I put the uh, car to the side until tonight so I have a chance to work on it and um, anyways it's midnight and I'm working on about an hour and a half Man, two hours maybe. And this two hours is taking me that long just to get this cross brace out. There it is. And it is Swiss cheese. It's not rusted out, but look at the amount of holes. I had to cut them out of the shadow here. 
the amount of holes I had to cut to get it out. Um, and then I just kind of been spending time cleaning because of the just amount of sheer rust and dirt that's falling on the floor. It's beginning of my mouth and stuff, so I cleaned it up really good. Or at least tried to vacuum it. So here's the deal. So I'm at the point now I'm ready to start cutting the floor. I've got my sawzall out. And you can see with a cross brace. This cross brace was a, was a complete bitch to get out. I'm not going to lie. Um, most of the holes that I cut were just because of the um, uh, the spot weld bit. is just, I mean, it's just sharp. And it's really easy to go right through both layers. So I'm going to have to, I mean, it doesn't matter. I'm going to weld it up anyways. So it's out. The hole here has gotten wider. I mean, this entire floor, as you guys already know, is shot. So, I'm trying to come up with a plan. I'm going to do a side at a time. I don't want to lose the the structure integrity of the um, of the vehicle and this thing to start to twist and collapse on me. And I don't look up and all of a sudden my T-top center is you know bowing up like this. I don't think it's going to happen because the trans tunnel is staying. You know what I mean? It's not going anywhere. It's a pretty strong part of the structure but it could happen also you know these your rockers is part of the part of a subframe so it's obviously not going anywhere either if I was going to cut this then you'd be obviously pretty bad I'm not doing that so what I'm going to do though is take the sawzall down the edge and down the back and cut it pretty low I'm going to leave a, as much lip on there as I can and then when I get to this area, um, I'm going to have to cut this way until I hit the cross brace. There's a cross, cross brace on the floor. It goes all the way from the, from the pedals to about right here. So there's spot welds. They go all the way back. I want to do it the right way. Um, and I want to get all the spot welds out and lay the floor on and weld it up. But there's two problems with that. One of them is... I can't see the spot welds. That tar stuff is hard to get off. Um, I could spend the next two, three hours scraping that up easily. Um, and then once, even if I do get that off and everything's peeled off, once I put the floor down, I don't know where it is underneath it without putting this old one on top of it and trying to trace it and hope it all lines up. So what I may do is just cut around it and shave the metal down so it's so it's flush. Um, it's just going to give it about this much more thickness on that area then. Okay, here comes the fun, I guess. Cutting through like butter. All right, so got a chunk cut out. So that was pretty easy. Um, it's gonna be much harder getting around the exhaust over here and cutting up to the floorboards. So this is why most people end up just patching what they need because it is a lot of work working around the exhaust and uh, the cross brace. So I mean the floor is already cut. From there all the way back so you know that is so deep I'm, I'm gonna have it's gonna be hard there's still a lot of padding I'm gonna have to point you know I'm gonna have to cut all the way through here and then back so it's gonna be a chore for sure okay so it's been almost a week since I worked on this thing last um, haven't got much done uh, life kind of gets in the way so haven't had a whole lot of chances to do a lot to it let me show you what I did do. Um, I got all this actually done last Friday, I believe, and um, started cutting the floors out. So I've got a nice hole in here now. Yeah. And again, it's late, so I need to get some more light out here. I really do because I can't see back there. But um, basically, what I did was take a grinder wheel with my grinder. Right now, I've got a uh, I've got a wire wheel on it to scrape off some of this undercoat, but I take that and I um, was able to make a couple starter cuts. Then I used a big sawzall, went all the way down the line, made a cut there, went that way, and then I cut up against the uh, 
this is the subframe. I don't know if you can see that or not. You don't want to cut into that for obvious reasons. And that, and then, of course, it's not sitting flush because of all the undercoat. There is undercoat all the way up here, down there, and all the way up to the front. That I'm going to have to get a lot of it off um, to get that pan in so I can weld it. So I kind of, I kind of started here. It's a uh, time-consuming process. It's loud, and it's it makes quite a bit of a mess. That's undercoat just from that little piece right there. So it kind of gets all over you. Um, but anyways, this is the floor that I've cut off. So as you can see, it is just rotten pieces of metal. Okay, taking a second to put a light in the car. Makes wonders, man. Sometimes just slow down. Put a light in. Take your time. <laughs> Anyways, should have done it a long time ago. I did have this light. I need to use it more. Okay, so a lot more cutting and all the spot welds. I finally got the top part of um, the floor around the brace off. Yes. So that's the trans cross member metal out right there. Um, there's only a few spot welds in the middle to peel that off, so I'll probably go ahead and try to get that piece off and this piece off. And this will give me something to hear the floor to. Try to get that down to some bare metal and then we'll grind this off, spray on some weld through primer and uh, attempt to lay the floor in, start marking it, hopefully it'll fit. Okay, so I'm going to test fit it even though I haven't gotten that piece off yet and I have a lot of metal to ground, grind down. You know, I mean to me it's important that once you go this far, you you know, take some time to get some bare metal to get the welder to stick this floor to. Um, I don't know, man. This is the first for me, and that corner is going to be quite difficult. So, let's see what we got here. Let's test this. this girl. Call it quits for tonight. Um, I'm happy that I got it fitted. It looks like progress. It physically looks like, you know, you've made progress. And to me, it's just, it's little bit of satisfying goes a long way um, whenever you're out here you know sweating getting all dirty and uh, anyways it's what it's all about man once you get it done and you stand back and say cool I did that but I haven't really done it yet so I still have to do a lot of trimming um it fits in there pretty well now I cut a good slice off the back um, essentially I'm going to try to mate this I don't know if you can see this right here but right here is where that grip. I'm gonna to try to get this lip to come over like it is here, and then um, we'll spot weld it all the way down here. You know, put some rust protectant in between here, and then seam seal the edges. Same with this. There's actually too much metal coming up on this top part. Um, it's really unnecessary. In fact, it's kind of causing a problem because of right there. I still need to scrape off some of that crap. And right there, you can kind of see the gap. So. The floor fits well, um, you know, 
I can push it over and it's actually up against the frame like it should be. So, I mean, this is a quality piece of metal, man. I Nothing bad to say. This metal is a hell of a lot thicker than I thought it was going to be. Um, it was not really all that easy to cut. And um, check out the underside here. You see the floor is just a little close to the, uh, I mean, it's a little, little bit of a gap right between the um, the brace, the floor brace and the floor. But that, that's good. I mean, I expect that that gap because of this top piece over there uh, that needs to be cut off. I need to trim that that corner right there because it's just too much metal and it's coming up and it's going right into the padding. So it's keeping it from falling all the way down. Once it does though, you can definitely see that um, I'll be able to trace the outside edge um, of this right here and we'll drill a whole bunch of holes and spot weld it back into the uh, cross brace where it belongs. But hey, look at that. The rust is gone. There's still a little bit of rust in that corner there. Um, that's kind of going into the seam. The, the brace itself or the uh, torque box is fine. And um, it's just that, that rust right there where all that metal meets is kind of rusted. So I'm going to do my best to fix, fix that. But hey man, let's step back, take a look at it one more time, because it's somewhat satisfying to see a, a floor in the worst part. And then once you do something once, and you get the hang of it, the next side's going to be a breeze, especially if I don't have to cut out all that front, we're just going to cut this square out of the back and get the um, that section done. So, cheers. Shower. I deserve to chug something here. What do we got? We're just gonna go with the cores. I'm over the pumpkin ale. No moss pumpkin ale. So this is how you celebrate at 11 o'clock on a weeknight. After cutting and grinding, creating a mess on this girl. Yes, I'm thirsty so bottoms up. Think about this weekend and then maybe possibly next week I'm on vacation and um, me and my wife are going to do some stuff around the house and I'm going to take her out for a birthday so I'm going to actually do some work on the car hopefully and I think if I'm lucky I can get done with it. We get it welded in. Once it's welded in, um, yeah I don't know, one of these days I'll get money I'll have money to put um, some down on mat you know, and some carpet in it. So. I don't want to forget though, I had to weld the seat brackets in before I put this floor in. The back seat brackets need to be taken, when the floor needs to be taken out, kind of get ahead of yourself, but don't forget, I got to weld in those two brackets on the bottom side, um, much, much easier, and you make much better welds when, you know, you're not welding, fighting gravity, so we'll do that, make sure that gets done before I go any further. Cheers.